It gives me great pleasure to uh, introduce His Excellency Ambassador Lom, the Ambassador from Vietnam to the UK. Uh, he's been in London for just over a year now, and we hope that his time here improves a bit now the pandemic is receding. But he did tell me he was here in the 90s, so perhaps he's got a better idea of London than I might have given him credit for. Um, he got a PhD in economics from Rome University, has been ambassador in Rome, so I guess that means he speaks at least three languages, which puts most of us to shame. He studied at university at the universities of Oxford and Harvard. He joined the Vietnamese Foreign Office in 1999, and amongst his appointments, he's represented Vietnam at the UN Food and Agricultural Organization, and was Director General of the Department of Foreign Affairs of Provinces, which deals with the relationships and developments between Vietnamese cities and provinces and the wider world. Um, and I'm very grateful to him for taking the time and trouble to be with us today. Ambassador, thank you. Thank you, Eric. Okay, thank you. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> uh, I'm enjoying. Okay, good. First time to hear about Vietnam. Okay, you know where Vietnam is? Fantastic, yeah. No, because I I always um, delighted to immerse myself and speak with young people because young people have a fresh mind about Vietnam. You know, Vietnam is often linked to a war, and that war is terrible, and many of the European British people of a certain age remember that devastating war in Vietnam. And often that war is like uh, cover and not make people think about Vietnam of today. And maybe because sometimes people try to like forget that terrible time and forget that name and forget that country too. Um, with the UK, Vietnam has uh, two things. That is, that's not helping Vietnam to be linked with the UK. First of all, we are not a former colony of the British Empire. And secondly, the UK has never been involved in the Vietnamese war. That's why the story of Vietnam and the name of Vietnam is not familiar with many of the UK public. So I take this opportunity to express my sincere thanks to the school for inviting me to be here today and to share some of the information about my country with the future of Britain, with the future uh, students, researchers uh, about uh, Asia. And I hope that in your uh, career path in the future, uh, you will find uh, Vietnam and you will uh, uh, work with Vietnam, interested in, in, in Vietnam, and then to bring uh, Vietnam and UK closer together. So I just uh, told the professor about uh, my first experience with Salas. I was a student. I was in Milan, uh, University of Bocconi. Uh, at that time, it's very trendy for European students around Europe to get to the London, to have a summer course of English, uh, to enjoy London and the UK during summer. So I came here in summer 1994. Uh, uh, many of you were not born yet at that time, I think. <laughs> and uh, young, you know, uh, innocent guy uh, just came and discovered uh, London and some of my friends studying here in SARS. And they said, let's come to SARS. It's where we have a lot of uh, Asian friends 
we we can enjoy that because they organize also some of the activity events here, and uh, and that's why I came to Salas, and it was very you know uh, surprised by the environment of this school. I have to say that I'm very much interested in doing later on an exchange, student exchange, that time they call Erasmus uh, with, 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 uh, with the UK. Um, so uh, I, I want to start with uh, presenting to you uh, about my country. So Vietnam today is a country, uh, it's located in Southeast Asia. I think we stay in the Brunei building, I think. So we are in the same area. Southeast Asian region. And uh, we border with China in the north, with Laos in the northwest, uh, and with Cambodia in the southwest. Um, we are around, we are around 330 uh, square kilometers, uh, 30,000 square kilometers, more or less like the UK. Um, but we have a population of around 100 million. And uh, the characteristic of this population is that this is a very young population. Uh, it's, uh, I think 60% of the population is under the age of 40. So if you, go, if you go to Vietnam, you see a lot of young people around and, 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 and it's a vibrant, very dynamic society and uh, in full economic uh, development. This year, uh, we will have an economic growth rate of around 8%. Um, and uh, I think we will achieve uh, later uh, next year around 6%. And this is our average growth rate for the last decade is 6.5%. So it means uh, it's a very prosperous and fast growing economy. Um, but of course, we started as a very low uh, level income country because the war, because of many reasons. The country was, after the war, went through a very difficult period uh, until the end of the 80s of the last century. And, uh, and then we decided to undertake the reform process, the opening process, the so-called integration process of Vietnam that take the country into the economic and growth path uh, since the beginning of 1990s. And then from a country of poverty, a country of devastated uh, and uh, wounded by the war, Vietnam gradually becoming a middle-income country, a country with social economic stability and a destination for investment, for tourism, and for people to people link. Now, when we talk about Vietnam, we talk about a country of stability, a peace a development a young generation that is thriving and hard working to bring the country forward so it's no more a name of a war and that is good and first and foremost the relationship with the US from being enemies in the past, Vietnam and the US now are becoming 
closest partner in many films. And that is also the incredible result of this opening path, of this integration path, and this reconciliation path. Together with the uh, economic development, we have established and developed a lot of diplomatic relations with the world. So next year, in 2023, Vietnam and the UK will celebrate 50 years of diplomatic relations. And as ambassador to the UK, I will have a lot of activities to celebrate that, to remember that, uh, particularly with the uh, cultural activities, education activities, art exhibition, music, dance, many activities will be organized not only in London, but also around the country, the four nations. Um, so talking about Vietnam-UK relationship, I have to say that we did not have a lot of cooperation since uh, the beginning of 2000. Uh, very little. Uh, as I say, Vietnam is not a former colony. We do not have a historical and traditional relationship. And, uh, and, and that's why uh, we do not have such uh, cooperation. But at the beginning of 2000, when we have a shift in the foreign policy of the UK government, I think I remember that time is the Labour government uh, under Tony Blair, uh, they adopted a very active engagement policy towards Vietnam, uh, particularly in the field of development cooperation. So the UK have uh, massively implemented in Vietnam an ODA program and helping Vietnam in three main areas, the poverty, uh, in, in poverty eradication, in, uh, in, in, in social and minority community development and in education. And uh, that marks the change in the foreign policy of the UK government towards Vietnam, beginning of 2000. And since then, the relationship between the two countries has been developed from strength to strength. Uh, and expanding to many areas. And I have to say that now when I am here together with you in this particular moment, the relationship between the two countries is the best ever before. So I think uh, we want to talk about UK relationship because I would like to uh, to give you the interest to study about Vietnam. Um, we established in 2010 a framework of collaboration that called Strategic Partnership Framework, where we outlined the five priority sectors of collaboration. The first is in the field of political diplomacy. Second is the trade and investment. The third is education. The fourth is defense security. And the fifth is people to people link. And I have to say that in these five areas, we have done a lot of achievements. And uh, for example, in the field of econo economic and trade and business, uh, from nearly nothing uh, in bilateral trade, uh, this year we have achieved nearly 7 billion US dollars of bilateral trade. 
and Vietnam is becoming the second largest trading partner of the UK in Southeast Asia. But if you think about the first partner of the UK is Singapore. And Singapore is not a market. Singapore is an intermediary. So if you talk about market, Vietnam is the first trading market for the UK. That explains the vibrant trade and business relationship between the UK and Vietnam for the last 20 years. Uh, the, the trade uh, volume have a growth rate of around 10% every year, from 10 to 15% every year, something incredible. And, uh, and we have a few, the future is much, much better because the two countries have signed the free trade agreement after the Brexit. And the UK now is soon to join the CPTPP, which means a free trade agreement in the Asia Pacific region with 11 other, uh, other 11 members, including Vietnam. And that will open a much, much more larger market for UK businesses in the region, including Vietnam. And that's why I think for the next five to 10 years, uh, UK will be more and more uh, deeply engaged and involved in the area. And Vietnam-UK trade relationship will flourish. Uh, I'm very optimistic about the trade volume. It will be double for the next five years. I'm sure about that. We'll soon reach 10 billion uh in in bilateral trade and even more but trade in good is not everything we have another aspect it's very important is trade in services you know that the uk is powerhouse of financial services so in vietnam the biggest two foreign banks and the first two foreign banks were given license to be established locally in Vietnam with HSBC and Standard Chartered Bank. The first foreign insurance company uh, was given license by 19, in 2008 was Prudential, for example. So in Vietnam, the UK is very much present with financial services. Another services sector that is flourishing between Vietnam and the UK is higher education. So the UK is for years, since 20 years now, since that shift the policy, that the UK is number one partner of Vietnam in higher education. Uh, the number of Vietnamese students studying in the UK pre-pandemic level is around 15,000. A lot more than the US, more than Australia, more than other any other European countries. Uh, between the universities of the two countries, we have nearly 100 partnerships. And the biggest partner of higher education of Vietnam is the University of London. <laughs> That's why uh, we have a very close relationship with University of London and also SARS. Um, and that is, I think, very important because investing in education is investing in future, investing in quality, investing in everything. And the UK has the, the top quality to offer to Vietnam. And I deem this sector is the most important thing, the most important sector of collaboration between Vietnam and the UK, education, education and education. And... Uh, and now, not only in higher education, the UK is number one for Vietnam in two other areas. First is English teaching. I mean, Vietnam, in the past, we, we were the colony of, 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 of France. So it used to be a Francophone country. 
uh, generation like my father, they speak French. But now in Vietnam, the young people, I think 90% of young people, they speak English. So I think, and uh, English teaching system is very important. We have the British Council is very much present in Vietnam. I think the biggest English teaching center of British Council in the region is based in Ho Chi Minh City. And they have a very uh, enormous program to, to, to widen and deepen that program with Vietnamese partners because they want to teach English within elementary, uh, within uh, kindergarten, within uh, in television, in many things. So I think the program is, is enormous. And then another sector that is very important, and here again, UK is our top partner, is the assessment, quality assessment. So by quality assessment, I'm not talking only about uh, university, but assessment about all schools, every school, so the old level in Vietnam. The, and, 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 and this is particularly important because we want to raise the level of our education system as a whole system. And we need a third party, good third party to help us to assess and to raise this quality. And again, the UK is our top point. In defense, I mean, actually, it's, uh, you know that recently the uh, the HMS Elizabeth, uh, uh, the uh, the airstrike air career group uh, has made the maiden trip uh, to the area, to Southeast Asia, and they plan to come back to the, to the area by 2024. I met with Secretary of State Ben Wallace two days ago, and this is another sign of the uh, of the uh, military cooperation, the military engagement of, of Britain. Uh, and it's also very important, the presence of, uh, and, and, the, and the collaboration in the field of defense and, and security. Uh, by uh, people to people link, uh, I want to uh, mention about the uh, collaboration between the local governments. It's very important. Nowadays, even in, in, in the UK, for example, in the field of education, of culture, uh, social services, many of the competence uh, rely on local governments and also in Vietnam. And we have this very strong collaboration with the uh, devolved administration. Now, for example, in, in the Wales, uh, and particularly in education and business, of course. And also for now with Scotland in renewables, Scotland now is becoming the center of the world for renewables, for example. Um, I'm thinking of about some of the initiative with Northern Ireland uh, for the next year also, because we think people to people link is very important. Friendship between the two countries, lie with them, stay with them, if you have this strong collaboration, strong relationship, strong people to people link, you have the good foundation of friendship among the two countries. And only based on a good friendship between the two countries, you can have sectoral development of relationship, as I said before. So because at the end of the day, relationship between the country, any country in the world, has to be friendship. It's not because you have to go there to make profit, to make money, or to make anything. Friendship among people around the world. And you feel happy about that. When you study about Vietnam, you need to be happy about studying Vietnam and not because you have to, all right? So I think um, another aspect that I would like to uh, raise with you is if you come to Vietnam, you find a hospital, hospitable, a friendly country, 
I think people of Vietnam is the most friendly people in the world. Uh, and, uh, you can feel that when you come to Vietnam. Uh, I, I used to, when I was in Italy, I was ambassador of Vietnam to Italy uh, in uh, 2012, 2015. I always told my Italian friends that if you go to Asia and you will see Vietnam as the most Western European style of country in Asia. And, uh, and that's true, that's true. Uh, we are very open country, not religious based. So we are, and uh, uh, we, we, we eat, we dress, we think, we, in, we enjoy, we entertain. Everything is like you in Europe. Uh, and, and, and the society is open and vibrant. You feel safe. Safety is number one uh, element in our society. And uh, I think it's very important that you feel attracted to the country and then you will study them. Um, I have met, when I came here a year ago, they have met several politicians, ministers, uh, MPs, and uh, professors. And a lot of them told me, Ambassador, I was in Vietnam years ago. I was very young, backpackers, tourists, and I love your country. Um, I think this is uh, my experience, a young uh, uh, student uh, in, uh, during that trip in Vietnam really helped me to understand your country and your people. So my message today is, I hope you will, uh, in your study path, will find Vietnam interesting and you will find, uh, you will come to Vietnam and visit Vietnam. I think now with the tourist scheme, we are working towards bringing a lot more uh, British students to come to Vietnam. And uh, I hope that uh, understanding Vietnam would also contribute to your uh, career and, uh, and to uh, also to contribute to develop Vietnam, your career relationship. And uh, I think, that will be a very interesting part forward. Uh, Vietnam is like a country that you, how can you say, you will find appetite when you discover that. This is a, this is a process, it's a path. So, uh, so the, the message normally, the message of my friend uh, in the tourism sector is a, uh, what is the, uh, the charming? Uh, it's a hidden charm. Vietnam is a hidden child, that is. So you need to discover this message. So I stay here for your question. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. That, that's fascinating. And as one of the few people present who <clears throat> remembers the Vietnam War, um, or reading about it, certainly, um, it's fascinating to hear how, how things have changed and moved on and one of the things from history is you can sort of you read about something and you think that that's it it's full stop and you don't always follow on what happens from there so thank you for that may i <clears throat> start the, the question by perhaps asking you the sort of question that is slightly awkward what we read quite a lot about chinese activities in the south china sea um, and I just wondered what the Vietnam perspective was on that, on the problems that are happening there. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, I don't know if you are familiar with the South China Sea issues, but um, we we have a, uh, in the South China Sea uh, there are. Uh, territorial sovereignty claims by different countries and parties. 
China, uh, Taiwan, Vietnam, Philippines, Brunei, Malaysia. And now under some aspect also Indonesia. And um, in the past, countries tend to, uh, to keep the differences under control. And that contributed to the stability of the region. You know that through uh, the South China Sea maritime routes is 60% of total trade volume between Europe and, and Asia Pacific. So that is very important maritime trade routes and and keeping the region stable and peaceful is the interest of everybody. Uh, but then we have, uh, I think, uh, a country had adopted and changed the policy towards a more assertive and more aggressive policy uh, because the country is big because the country is very strong. And, and that's why not only Vietnam, not regional countries, but also the international community have stood up and said, you have to abide by international law. You have to uphold international law. You have to play by the rules. We need to respect the so-called rules-based international order. And I think this is the common ground of many countries, including the UK. So I think what we need to do is first, we need to resolve differences through peaceful meanings, dialogue, and not through threat of use of force, of bullying others, uh, and this is what we stand for. And also UK as a member, responsible member, important member of the international community also has this position. Thank you very much. Um, questions, please. Sir. I was going to ask, is Ho Chi Minh City the most popular tourist destination? How much revenue is made every year? Okay, so Ho Chi Minh is the biggest city in Vietnam. It's the economic engine of Vietnamese economy. Meanwhile, Hanoi is more a political center, uh, but also a very important economic center. But Ho Chi Minh is always known as the powerhouse of our economic development. The, uh, uh, so if the GDP of Vietnam is around 400 billion US dollars last year, it makes um, the it's Ho Chi Minh City account for around 30%. So that is more or less the number. It's very important center, but it's not only the center for economic development, but it's, it's where we have a very vibrant community of experts. A lot of foreigners, the ones who stay there, investors, foreign investors, a lot of British investors, the ones who stay there. Now with the problem in Hong Kong, a lot of people in Hong Kong now is moving to Ho Chi Minh City and not Singapore. Because and, and and because Ho Chi Minh is a, a lot of room to develop, you know, you should have a a potential to 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 grow, and that's why a lot of people coming, and uh, a lot of British people there. I have a lot of people, my friends, British friends, living in Ho Chi Minh City, and they're very happy about that. I think we've got time for one more question, sir. Please. Um, I was wondering. 
because uh, the relationship between UK and Vietnam is strongly based on um, the administration of the for example, that was the beginning of really prosperous relations in the 2000s. I was wondering if with the UK's changing the prime minister quite a few times this year and in the last year, has that affected the relationship with Vietnam in any sense, and especially in the national security part of the relationship? <clears throat> Very good question. Um, and um, normally, students are very important, very interested in saying, in knowing, and even us, like diplomat. The first thing you see when you change government, you see how you change the foreign policy because the prime minister has their own views, their own evaluation and judgment about things in the world, uh, for example. So, of course, we are, we, we, we follow very closely. The new governments and the new administration, the new ministers, uh, on specific field of collaboration. So, for example, now we have a very good relationship in security and defense, and we see Ben Wallace as a as secretary of state there, and we have a very good relationship. Of course, if they change, we need to know how will be affected the Vietnam UK relationship in this field. We have a very good. Uh, relationship with the administration of uh, Boris Johnson, particularly in the field of climate change. So if the new government is changing their views on climate change, that will, force, will affect relationship with Vietnam and, and so on and so forth. So I mean, actually, it's a good question. So, uh, but the general uh, overall uh, feeling, uh, I am sure that is the positive development between the two countries is there. The path is there. And uh, the UK is very committed to Indo-Pacific. They have the Global Britain strategy, the tilt to Indo-Pacific. They are committed. Um, any new government, a new prime minister, new foreign secretaries uh, always confirmed that this not change. So the UK will commit their resources, their efforts, their time to the region. And that is, and of course, this also a very, I think, big argument of Brexit, right? Because people and many politicians, the Brexiteers always say that that is the future, that is the market, that is where we have to to go. And and and, and of course it's, it's true because when you see Trade relationship increased by 10, 15%. The economic growth of many countries in that region, you see India, for example, or you see Vietnam, it's astonishing. Yeah? It's completely changed every five to 10 years. Uh, and you put the money, $1 in Vietnam, you have five, $10 within one year, for example, and not like a small step. So I think it's, it's also a bet, a bet I mean, uh, because when you think is different about when you do, yeah, from thinking to doing, <laughs> it's, it's also depends on, so uh, depends on your own you know, capability, right? For example, uh, for business, for example, uh, in the past, many businesses, particularly the small and medium-sized companies, they used to work with the European market. It's very close to you, close in culture, close in geography, close in distance, close in system, uh, close in many things. So you just just be a little bit lazy working with European market, okay? But when you work with the Asia Pacific market, you have to travel, you have to 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 think, you have to 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 know, you have to study again, and you cannot be lazy. It's a competitive market. It's here. If you want to warm the economic competition, you need to be good at, at that, right? You have to, to try to that and not staying like, okay, this is it's different approaches. But I think with your young generation, like you are here and it good to study and it good to, 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 to be competitive. And SAWAS will give you this competitiveness. I'm sure that with Vietnam, you will be successful. Ambassador, thank you very much indeed. We need to call it a halt there, but thank you very much indeed. Okay.